Hello and a happy Halloween from Apple's Brooklyn Mac and iPad event. I apparently showed up at this Apple event dressed like Steve Jobs. Totally not intentional. Anyway, I am here at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. This is where Apple decided to host its latest event. And I just got hands on with the new MacBook Air. This was exciting to me, not just as a frequent laptop reviewer, but as someone who owns an aging Air and has been waiting so patiently for an update. I'm sure many of you have as well. So let's take a look at the new edition. Okay, so here we are with the long overdue, newly refreshed MacBook Air. And as you can see, it's sort of a mashup between the existing 12 inch MacBook and the more recent MacBook Pros. By that, I mean it has this smooth aluminum finish, in this case, available in three colors. As you can see, we chose the funkiest of the new colors for you just because it feels more notable than the classic silver. Um, and it has sort of the same shape generally as the old Air, um, just whittled down to the point where it has a lot in common design-wise with the 12-inch MacBook. Um, but on the other hand, it has some things in common with the higher-end Pro line too, including that Touch ID sensor you see right there in the upper right corner. Also, the addition of two ports makes it, uh, for what it's worth, a little more MacBook Pro-like than the classic 12-inch MacBook. Now, in terms of size and design, it's somewhere in between. This weighs in at two and three-quarter pounds. Um, pretty easy to lift with one hand, much easier to lift with the classic MacBook Air, which I have with me and which I use to file the story that accompanies this video. Um, similar to both the MacBook Pro and the 12-inch Mac, it has this flat, what Apple calls butterfly keyboard design. Now, this is the third generation of that keyboard design, which means it has more in common with the MacBook Pro typing experience than the 12-inch MacBook, which has the second gen keyboard technology. Either way, um, I feel a little wistful about this. I really love the classic MacBook Air keyboard. It was pillowy. It was easy to type on. There was a lot of key travel. Um, these are just flatter keys. So you will learn to use them. I can't promise that you will learn to love them. The touchpad is much easier to love, I will say, though. It is big. It is smooth. Um, it tracks really well. So I think you're going to enjoy using that. Moving on, um, I'm going to focus on what really makes this an obviously different machine from the MacBook Air, which is the Retina display on board. As you can see, the classic, um, really classic thick bezels have been whittled away to basically nothing. These really thin, perfunctory bezels here. So it's a gorgeous screen. Um, the screen angles are decent. This is, mind you, an LCD display. And the glossy finish, as you can see, mean that um, you will have some screen glare depending on your circumstances. We are in a room that has some really harsh overhead lighting. So that's just where we are right now. Um, there's uh, almost 50% more colors in this machine. It's not the same pro-grade color gamut that you'll find in some of uh, Apple's newer machines. This is the sRGB color gamut. Um, but uh, that will be enough for most people. The difference is still noticeable. This is a pretty vibrant display here. There's a lot of test imagery, and if we zoom in, you can really see a lot of detail. So it really is a gorgeous screen. Is it the absolute best specs that Apple has available to it? No, of course not. But this is the Air. It's meant to be a mid-range machine that's still affordable enough for a lot of people. Um, here on the sides, you'll find the speakers. Apple says that they are 25% louder than the previous Air and that they have double the bass. Now, as you can see, the bass is difficult to test in this test environment. There is so much competing noise. But I will say that I played two movies earlier on this machine, and at top volume, I was able to still hear the movies over all of the surrounding noise, which includes, as you can hear, some music in the background and lots of people talking nearby and these cavernous ceilings. Um, but I was still able to hear the movies over all that. So as far as the volume goes, yes, I'm going to vouch for that. The volume is pretty good on this small little machine here. Now, we're going to be getting a machine soon to test. The machine is up for pre-order today. It goes on sale next week, November 7th. We hope to have a full review on a gadget before then. So having left the hands-on area and having spent some time with the new MacBook Air, I have two takeaways so far. One, I will probably buy it for myself. I've been waiting really patiently for a new MacBook Air, and although there are always trade-offs in new machines, this ticks off most of the boxes for me. Also, I'm having a hard time understanding who now would buy the 12-inch MacBook instead. Here's the argument, or at least here's the argument in favor of the new MacBook Air. The new MacBook Air has a slightly cheaper starting price. We're talking $1,199 as opposed to $1,299 for the 12-inch MacBook. 
The new MacBook Air has a more powerful processor inside. It starts with a full-fledged Core i5 processor, an 8th gen Core i5 processor, as opposed to a lower power M-series Intel processor. The RAM is about the same. The battery life will probably be better on the Air. It has a Touch ID sensor, which the MacBook doesn't have. It has an extra Thunderbolt 3 port. Really what you're getting with a 12-inch MacBook is it is Apple's lightest laptop, so it weighs two pounds instead of 2.75 and it starts with more storage, but that can be fixed with money, of course. And I don't know if the 128 gigabytes that come standard on the MacBook Air is gonna even be a deal breaker for everyone. I don't even think it would be a deal breaker for me. So really, I think the arguments so far are stacked in favor of the Air over the 12 inch MacBook for most people. That product just, it's hard to understand now who that's for exactly. But anyway, the MacBook Air goes on sale today. It starts shipping next week on November 7th. And we hope to have a full review on Engadget before then. So I'm looking forward to spending more time with the Air and also giving you more specific thoughts on things like performance, on battery life, and also how it stacks up to comparable machines in the PC space. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching.